Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to walk in public. When I'm walking around the city, New York City, the main thing that's going in my head is that I am not the only person that lives in this city. There are other people, many other people here, and I need to be conscious of sharing the city with those other people. In this video, I would like to share my tips for how I walk in public. I am always, always, always looking forward, looking up, or glancing down on the sidewalk. Those are the three places that my eyes are whenever I'm walking. If I need to look something up or find my way, I step off the main path into a corner, I stop walking, and then I do whatever I need to do. Because I am very conscious of other people walking around me. And why would I just aimlessly walk towards them without looking at them and be in their way? I wouldn't do that. That's inconsiderate. So, if you're walking down the street, be aware that many other people have somewhere to go some of them are in a big rush, and it's very considerate to be conscious of that. In my mind, walking on a busy sidewalk is kind of like being on the highway. There are people and there are lanes. And when I'm walking, I always try to walk on the side of the sidewalk, out of the main thoroughfare. And if I need to take over, because someone's walking a little slower, then I bypass them and then I still move off to the side. Walking on the sides of the sidewalk is much more considerate to everybody else that's sharing the sidewalk with you. I'm present while I'm walking. When I leave my place and I have a destination, I'm, I'm fully here and I'm looking around and I'm looking at other people. You notice beautiful little, beautiful little vignettes that actually end up staying in your head like a photograph and that sometimes last for years, but that's only possible if, if you're fully present. When I am walking outside, I never ever have anything in my ears. I, I personally don't want that. I don't want the sounds of the city to be blocked out from my consciousness. I want to hear them, good and bad. And if they're too loud, I go like this. I walk this way because I want to be considerate of everyone walking together. And I know that in... <laughs> I really enjoy being aware of what's happening around me. It's really part of the experience of being fully present while I'm walking. When you're walking down the sidewalk, especially in a big city like New York City, you should be glancing down on the sidewalk because there's stuff that you can step in that you don't want to step in. So. When I'm walking, I'm scanning the sidewalk, or if I'm not scanning the sidewalk, I'm actually looking up. There is so much to see if you raise your sight line to the rooftops of these beautiful buildings here in New York. There are little architectural details that are just sort of hiding and that were put up there many, many years ago by stonemasons, by architects, looking to beautify the tops of these buildings. You miss all of that if you're not looking up.
those buildings up there. Those are some of my favorite buildings in this neighborhood. And I have walked by those buildings many times, almost every single day for the last 10 years. And still, when I'm looking up as I walk by them, every now and then I find something new that I never noticed before in the details. Like little cherubs, there are lions, there's a little dog around the corner. And that, that is what happens when you're looking up as you walk down the street. You see beautiful things, but little secrets in the architectural details are revealed to you over time. This ledge right here on the Apthorpe, which is a beautiful pre-war building on the Upper West Side, I noticed this on one of my walks and I just marveled at the subtlety. So it slightly goes up like this and then it goes down. And that's for the rainwater and the snow. This ledge goes around the whole building, which stretches around the whole block. And all of this was carved so subtly for that purpose. And I just think that is so classically beautiful. These are the things that I love seeing when I'm walking and looking. This is, this is what I'm pleasantly surprised by, these small details. Look at this beautiful lamppost that goes from being a cylinder to a square. And the term that we use to describe that architecturally is the transition. So the way this was designed, beautiful, beautiful old design, is you have the cylindrical column and then the use of a botanical detail, this acanthus leaf, is what takes that cylinder down here, it's still round, and then the acanthus leaf is flipped. And the point of the acanthus leaf is what takes it from being a circle to a square base. So many beautiful, subtle little details if you're just looking. When you're walking, have a sense of direction internally. When you see it on other people, it's something that's impressive. When I say have a sense of direction, I mean walk upright, walk with purpose. Don't just walk around willy-nilly <laughs> like this aimlessly and and you see that too sometimes when i'm walking along the sidewalk the person in front of me has no real sense of purpose and it's hard for me to get around them and when i see that i think often that 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 seems to be a reflection of what's going on inside if you cultivate a sense of real purpose and direction while you're walking and you walk with confidence, amazingly, your life starts to move in that direction. Your life starts to actually reflect the way you walk. When you're walking, have a sense of direction where you're walking straight. It's not like random parts of Sri Lanka that I've been to where I was walking along and you can't even figure out where to walk because there's not a clear delineation of where you should walk. That is not the case here in New York City. The sidewalks and the streets were laid out beautifully. There are straight lines on the sidewalk. There are straight lines on the curb. There is no reason why you should wander aimlessly not knowing where you're going. There's a sense of direction on the straight lines of the sidewalk. It's very clear how you can walk in a straight line. So use that if you have to. Let that guide you. Don't walk on your toes. I see that sometimes. Don't walk like this. Walk heel first. Plant your heel to the ground. Planting your heel to the ground is the beginning of a confident walk. When I've tried to analyze why people sometimes walk on their toes, 
it, and they don't put their heels down, but they're walking just on the balls of their feet. It seems to look like they're scared. And I don't know if that's an accurate reflection of what's happening, but if I had to imitate it, that's what it feels like. It feels like internally, subconsciously, I don't want to put my heels down because I'm scared of something happening. Whereas when I put my heels down and I'm firmly planted on the ground, I'm secure. So be conscious of even how you take a step. When you go to take a step, plant your heel down firmly and lift your foot completely off the ground when you're taking another step. Don't drag your feet. Dragging your feet is another reflection of things just not being as confident and forward as they could be. Lift your feet when you walk. Cultivate a sense of how you want to do things so that it affects your life in a positive way. And if you can incorporate that into affecting other people's lives in a positive way, that is the way that society changes for the better. When you are not just thinking about yourself, when you are thinking about all the other people around you that you're sharing your city with. These little tiny bits of how to walk in public, they might seem like useless, meaningless things, but I guarantee to you that if you figure out a way to walk with confidence and purpose, you will see your life actually change. Walking confidently, purposefully, consciously of other people around you is a way of interacting with the real world on a daily basis that has a meaningful impact to your life.